Are we live? We live. Okay, cool. Okay, hello everybody. We're here in the Rebel County. This is a rally for truth and civil rights. We just came down today to, to have a look at the sort of numbers that turn up. Let me give you a little look at this. Quite a small guard of presence here today, actually. Uh, very different than what we're used to seeing in Dublin. Dublin. As far as I can only see, there's four guards over there. And maybe there's a few just down at the end of the protest here as well, following it up. for coming down to us here today.
So we all come here today from different places, with different backgrounds, and with different political opinions and ideas, but we all have a few key beliefs in common. We believe in freedom, and we believe in democracy. We believe our government are in the process of, and for the most part, have turned what has left of our democratic country of Ireland into an authoritarian, totalitarian state. We believe it is our duty to rebel, to resist, to revolt, and to defy the Nazi laws that the government are opposing now and will be imposing the future and the people of Ireland. We will not let this happen under our watch. We will not let our children's freedom be thrown away. We will not let the great sacrifice our ancestors made just over 100 years ago to gain our freedom go to waste. Try all they want, but they will not get away with this. They will not take our constitutional democratic rights and freedom from us. We have fantastic speakers coming onto the platform today to talk. Just like all of us, they come from different backgrounds as well. And just like us, they are people with a conscience and with morals. None of these brave speakers, just like the rest of us, have anything personally, personally to gain from coming up here today. In fact, they have so much to lose, but they feel it a duty to themselves, to their family, and to their country to speak out against the tyranny happening in this country at this moment in time. Can the people of Ireland just ask themselves one question? Why would these speakers stand up here today on this platform with nothing to gain personally, but with so much to lose. Just ask yourself that, please. Why would they risk so much? <laughs> so without further ado, I would like to welcome our first speaker up on the platform. This lady is one of the bravest women I have ever met. She has been kidnapped, arrested, and detained by the Gardaí and was currently along with our fellow accused, Daryl Flaherty, being harassed and intimidated through the court system here in Ireland. Now is there a you will ask, handing out leaflets to people in their own local area. That's it, a constitutional right, and they'll be put through all of this because of that. From Scala Rica in County Tipperary, I welcome Katie McGrath. Let's give her a huge welcome for all the Not at all. Hi everybody, I was born here in this city and since then I've travelled the whole world and I can honestly say there is no place like Cork. <laughs> the beautiful wholesome people of this city and county embody the heart of this nation and as a result people have come from all over. Oh, yeah. Can you hear me now? Hi. <laughs> These people have come from all over and they've made Cork their home. So today I'm going to call out the media as a tool for the establishment and their deliberate failure to fully inform the public. Before we are slandered as whatever and counted as just a few dozen, know that we are custodians of democracy and the future. We are calm, reflective people putting our differences aside and coming together in the interest of liberty and sovereignty. We recognize that every life matters and all lives lost are tragic. That is why we must openly discuss difficult topics and not allow the media to distract or divide us by our emotions. The situation is critical for everyone on this island. The past year we witnessed a coup on our constitution. Uh, legislators giddy on power, aided and abetted by unlawful public servants who are actively working against our freedom, our bodily integrity and our access to justice. Yeah. I had to write it down, lads, I didn't remember. Um, person, personal autonomy edges towards science fiction as we see corporate and state entities collude to take control over our lives. None of this would be possible without mainstream media, their selective silence and their total compliance. 
That is why we must now call injustice out now. We must demand transparency and accountability now. And we must find our courage now. We are standing up for the truth and freedom and we'll settle for nothing less. <laughs> we must ask ourselves, is this about public health or control? Is this a pandemic or an intensive marketing, marketing campaign? From the whole spectrum of medical information available, we are subjected to nepot and clowns like Luke O'Neill. As all debate, <laughs> as all debate and contrarian views are censored from public broadcast, COVID-19 from the outset had only one outcome, where all roads lead to mandatory vaccinations and digital surveillance of your data. <laughs> Nazi propagandist Joseph Gordon said that if you repeat a lie often enough, it becomes accepted as truth. Yeah. Just three weeks to flatten the curve, and this, is emergen this emergency legislation is only temporary. Hold firm, we're all in this together. What they mean by we is that Bilderberger Simon Coveney has a brother, Rory, and Rory Coveney is the director of strategy at RTE. <laughs> we are all in this together means Labour TD Alan Kelly has a brother Declan and Declan is the CEO of Teneo, PR company behind the Department of Health COVID-19 response. <laughs> the colour yellow, a play on the meaning of words of COVID and with COVID, along with constant shuffling of case numbers and deaths convinced intelligent people to abandon their critical thinking and to give the unelected nephew absolute power over their lives, their bodies and their future. It turned ordinary people into authoritarian policy enforcers who see humanity as a biohazard. To some people, this justified the isolation of our precious elderly while conditioning others to accept a caged life without question. RTE, or the Ministry of Propaganda, I call it, had their famous party. The authors of the guidelines mocked us from their golf dinner in Clifton, while the musical chairs game of Taoiseach, yeah, they did. The musical games game of Taoiseach have to suppress laughter as they deliver their latest scripted messages of deception. Varadkar already told us there will be no Christmas this year and he mumbled something about indefinite lockdowns. So we should not be surprised that Big Pharma, Big Tech, Neffet and the government exist free from the intervention of the law while we are sending grandmothers to prison for not wearing a mask in a supermarket. Where are where are our brothers and sisters in the Garda Siakana and at what point will they refuse to be used against their own people? I surmise that we are not all in this together. Fear is a powerful persuader and a weapon of division and control. Fear has entered our homes, our minds, our relationships and our workplace which would never have been possible without the constant psychological programming of the mainstream media. Our society is being re-engineered as a two-tier society, as many unmasked people have experienced services and utilities denied to them by people eager to pa participate in what they believe to be the greater good. We are forced to navigate other people's fear-based mindsets, when triggered by a maskless face, the brain responds by shutting down the frontal lobes where memory and logic reside, and the amygdala takes control of the fight, flight, or freeze response in a person. Every news report, every advert is a psychological provocation, setting us up in a game of pawns against each other. Frontline workers and everybody else, masked and uh, frontline workers versus everybody else, masked versus anti-masked, and more sinisterly, the vaccinated versus the unvaccinated. Yeah. Yeah. So please hold the following definition in your mind. The definition of terrorism is the unlawful use of violence and intimidation, especially against civilians, in the pursuit of political aims. 
Right, remember that one. Despite assurances that emergency COVID legislation would only be temporary, it is never temporary. Previous legislation was unenforceable by law, so it was done under intimidation, coercion and the abuse of the Public Order Act. No journalist or reporter dared to question this mess, so instead they wait for specific court cases to generate headlines that suit the COVID control narrative. At the same time, the media are ignoring that the district courts have become private unconstitutional COVID court sittings. Private security man the courts now. They deny the public entry and even if the defendant is not uh, wearing a mask and claiming an exemption, um, they are denied entry also. Nazism. Nazism. Nazis, yeah. Nazism. On Wednesday night last, the Dáil voted in a Frankenstein piece of legislation, giving absolute power to one individual similar to Hitler's enabling act of 1933. The media were not silent, but compliant. They provided cover for an attempt to rush through this legislation without due process. They did not question or criticise the content of the legislation, and true to form, the independent newspaper labelled the hundreds of people gathered outside the convention centre as just anti-maskers, while deflecting from the enormity of the situation unfolding inside the convention centre. To put this legislation into real life context, I'll remind you of Pat Sweeney's story. Pat published his video of the Gardaí in breach of their oath of office as they targeted mass under the guise of public health. A week later, Pat woke up at 3 a.m. with four guardies standing around his bed. They arrested Pat under the Mental Health Act, claiming they received a phone call from Pat's mother about the concern of the safety of his children. Pat's mother died in 1997. Trusla disappeared his children, and it took days to be reunited with them. And when they were, he found out his children had been taken to Dublin Port and then back to a foster farm in his home county. This is just one example of the reality that we are facing and the abuse of power, so we cannot ignore it and in hope it will just go away. All media outlets, including Red FM and 96 FM, received between 40 and 100,000 euro to promote the COVID-19 message last year. So... When the media is bought, society is not free, as there is no obligation to hold authority to account. Instead of the wrongdoers, you and I bear the responsibility of this. Our businesses are closing. We are losing loved ones to isolation and suicide. We are, we are interrogated by the Gardaí, while the legislators are out of control and the media are silent about that. <laughs> That makes the media unfit for purpose and should be treated as such until a bit of decency and cop on comes into their profession. Former mainstream journalists, small independent media like Corruption Awareness Ireland and a countrywide team of citizen journalists have stepped up to fill the journalistic void and they have cleared a path through a minefield of propaganda. They risk their liberty to show up, to ask difficult questions and bring the truth to light. Um, it is an unpopular position and a thankless job as they try to raise the collective consciousness on the looming dangers to health, democracy and freedom. The Irish Inquiry doorstep Luke O'Neill outside his lab in Dublin. Luke admitted for the first few hundred thousand vaccines, they were the safety trial. So the many people who have already taken this vaccine under the promise of a return to a normal life have not been informed that they are part of an experiment running until 2023. Paper and video trails like this are necessary victories when it comes to the prosecutions of the wrongdoers as they try to remove deniability. So I'll ask you for three cheers for our alternative media who are bright lights in this dark time. Hip hip! Hip hip! Hip hip! hip. We must push back on Red FM, 96 FM, The Echo, RTE and all those who took financial incentive to lie to people. 
Time is precious as we race against winter lockdowns, the undiagnosed diseases of 2020 and the adverse effects of the fallout of the vaccine. There's what, a thousand people here today. If you pledge one hour each week, that's a thousand man hours to calling the media out on their lies, to demand accountability from the wrongdoers. One hour to push back on your radio stations, to writing to editors, switching off RTE and lighting up their social media pages. Yeah. Neil Brenderville, Mick Mulcahy, PJ Coogan, we will accept nothing less than the truth and freedom. Yeah. I'm nearly done. <laughs> Instead, let's talk about restoring the constitution, accountability and abusive process, the economic reality of the longest lockdown in Europe, the horror of the social credit system, 2023 and the end of human mRNA vaccine safety trial on the public, the real deaths and side effects of these mRNA vaccines. And more uh, sinisterly, if event 201 was a simulation of a pandemic that we now find ourselves living through, then the World Economic Forum has a cyber polygon set for July 9th, and that must be interrogated. The cyber polygon is a simulation of a cyber attack on the financial system. And lastly, if the vaccines are being sold as a return to normal life, then why are Aer Lingus laying off their Cork staff come September? I leave you with this one final call. The empty hut behind centralised authority will never understand love. Well, our ancestors sacrificed and endured terrible hardship because they loved this country and each other enough to never quit. As we navigate the next months, we must have faith and discern wisely, remembering who we are as people. We must be prepared to replace fear with courage and to face our challenges with our integrity intact. When the military are awarded medals for bravery, the soldiers are asked, were you afraid? The answer, no, I was terrified, but I did it anyway. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Oh, the robot! Oh, A big cheer for Katie, everyone. Oh, Our next speaker here today, he needs very little introduction. He's a retired GP and one of the most respected doctors in Ireland. He's been a campaigner for human rights his entire life. He told me during the week that he was actually fined £500 in 1984 for selling condoms, which is a huge sum of money back then. He is a man who pioneered the vasectomy procedure in Ireland. We might be able to get him out of retirement to start out a few pricks above the doll. <laughs> and that's his achievements. He's also the founder of Clay and General Hospital. Put a big, put your hands together and a big welcome for Dr. Andrew Rin. Oh dear, it's just straight, straight again, Paul. Up the Rebel City. The Rebel City indeed. And thank you for inviting me here. Uh, and thank you for asking me to speak. It's always a privilege. I'm going to be very brief. You'd be glad to hear. Uh, inject, injecting healthy young people, and particularly children, with an experimental gene therapy is not just wrong, it is evil. <laughs> experimental treatment on children is what Joseph Mengele did. <coughs> And he was never caught either. Lies, lies, lies. That's, that's all we're getting. The wearing of masks gives you some protection against infection. That is a lie. It does not. <coughs> Social distancing was dreamt up by some idiots. And it's a total waste of time. 
lockdowns are a waste of time, according to the World Health Organization. <clears throat> That's when it can make up its mind, which which it is. Sometimes it is, but sometimes it isn't. They are a waste of time, and they're painful, and people yeah. suffer. And marriages suffer, and young people commit suicide at a greater rate during lockdowns. And all these people in business trying to trying to make a living, to bring a home a wage to feed their children. They, they all suffer because of the lockdown. We all suffer in, in varying degrees, and it is, it is for nothing. There is a pandemic going on. That is a lie as well. There is no pandemic. In any pandemic, the least you'd expect is that a few people would die. In fact, more people died in 1921 than, sorry, in 2021 than died in 2022. There were less deaths during the pandemic. What kind of a pandemic is that? This is just nonsense, utter, utter nonsense. The variant, the variant, there is no variant. The, the wave, a new wave is coming in, according to Dr. Tony Hula Hoop. <coughs> the Prince of Darkness, he never has anything good to say, no good news. <coughs> and when we do begin to rejoice that we might get out of this, He's a dark cloud over all of us. Yes. He's a horrible person. Yes. <coughs> and I'm ashamed to call him a colleague of mine. And I'd say that to his face if he's here as well. <coughs> there were 130 new cases yesterday. There was no such thing. There were no new cases yesterday. They were tested with a flawed test. <clears throat> there were some, I don't know how many deaths, uh, 20 deaths. Those deaths were people who tested positive to a false, a false test and who died from something else. This is, this is all generated fear. The vaccine will protect you from getting the, co the coronavirus. The vaccine will do no such thing. The vaccine is extremely dangerous. There are now thousands of people, tens of thousands of people dying shortly after the vaccine or within a few weeks of it. I wouldn't touch it with a 40 foot pole. <coughs> yeah, it's all done on the, on the behest of the pharmaceutical industry, who incidentally are also probably funding the media and, and RDE as well. Since when did Ireland start to imprison its own people? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Margaret Bottomir was locked up in prison for wearing for not wearing a mask. Absolutely disgraceful, despicable behaviour. She wasn't even given a trial. She was just thrown into jail because she wouldn't wear a mask. Did you ever hear such horrible behaviour? I Shame to call myself an Irishman that we would treat people like that. There was, there was another woman, and they made her father so sick. They gave him the, uh, the, the so called vaccine, and it's not a vaccine at all, but they gave it to him anyway. And they made him so sick that he had to go into hospital. And, he's, and he was a widower. And his daughter came over to try and help him when he got out of, when he got out of hospital. And what did they do to her, having made her father sick? They stuck her in a dirty old hotel near the airport in Dublin. And they kept her there for five days and wouldn't let her out to help her father. Her name, her name was Emer Kelly. I'm nearly finished now, except to say that the vaccine is dangerous, and I've already said that. It's not a vaccine at all. It's this experimental, experimental gene therapy. Uh, somebody said recently, I'm going to have the vaccine. I've done all the research. And the answer to that is you haven't done all the research. You are now part of the research. Yeah. Thank you very much.
A big round of applause there for Dr. Ren. So next up, we have another very brave young Irish doctor, a graduate of UCC, our college here in Cork, former chair of the Midwest out of Boris GP service, Shannon Doc, until he was recently removed due to his outspoken views on what's happening in this country at this moment in time. He's also a husband and a father. Amanda has risked so much just to tell the truth. Amanda has been intimidated, threatened, and made a prior by the medical community, but yet he does not yield and keeps on speaking the truth. We all know him at this stage as a true hero. Coming from Adair County Limerick, I'd like to welcome on the platform Dr. Pat Morrissey. Hi everyone. Yeah. Okay. Thanks very much. I'm a bit taller than Kate, I suppose. Okay. Hello everyone. Thanks to Dermot and Peter for inviting me to speak today. I'm here in a personal capacity. Yes, I am a doctor, but I'm speaking more as a concerned father worried about the future of my children and your children as well. I also want to state from the outset that I'm not anti all vaccines, but I am anti bad medicine. And, and I think we need to use our brains to tell what, what's what and what's the difference. To start with though, we must remember those who have suffered so much in the last 15 months those who have suffered due to isolation and loss of work. We also remember those who died by suicide caused by despair generated by our incompetent government. We remember those who were deprived of human interaction towards the end of their lives and the hardship of those left behind having to grieve in such difficult circumstances. Why this unnecessary suffering? We know lockdowns are proven to cause more harm and death than any benefit. And why did the government suppress access to effective treatments such as hydroxychloroquine, ivermectin and vitamin D? Could it be, could it be that the emergency use authorization for the vaccines was dependent on no alternative treatments being available. I wonder. There's also no evidence proving masks do what they say. If anything, we have evidence to show that they don't work. And look at all the states without mask mandates, such as Florida, and Texas, Sweden, Russia. Russia is now the land of the free, and they're doing just fine. So, so who's responsible? Who's responsible? Well, we can see the ineptitude of Stephen Donnelly and Tony Houlihan, whose delusional lies about antigen testing were laid bare as pure propaganda by Pat Kenny recently on the national media. How on earth is Houlihan still there after the swine flu pandemic scandal and the cervical check cancer scandal? He seems to get more power with each failure. Holohan and others in Neffet manipulate the case numbers and the debt numbers with the misused PCR test. Carrie Mullis, the Nobel Prize winning inventor of the test, is spinning in his grave due to the misuse of this test and the high cycle thresholds. The story moves on, however. We now see the government seeking to introduce medical apartheid through the vaccine passport system. This will split society. And why? When we know the vaccinated can con contract and transmit the virus as well. 
Okay. Apparently, none of us are good enough now to be in the audience at the Late Late Show if we don't have the jab. This is the Starks. This is the Starks, the medical apartheid. And it's coming into workplaces as well. RTE has done its job of fear-mongering so well. Where's the evidence for asymptomatic spread? And why did they deny the truth around antigen testing? Is it because that would mean giving power back to the people and treating them like they're adults? Brian Tuberty must be angling to get Klaus Schwab head of the World Economic Forum onto the show. The World Economic Forum is famous for saying that by 2030, you'll own nothing and you'll be happy. Maybe Ryan wants to get Bill Gates on so he can ask him about the sterilization vaccine programs that he was using in East Africa over the last 10 years. We also know Ryan is a big fan of Tony Fauci, the American version of our Tony Hulan. Tony Fauci's had a bad week. He's been caught up in his own web of lies about masks and lies about funding gain-of-function research in the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Fauci's exposure may be a victory, but we must fight on. The million-strong crowd in London last weekend inspires us to fight on. However, However, we must realize that our brothers and sisters trusted and believed our lying government and their so-called experts. Our brothers and sisters are so desperate to regain their freedom that they'll follow the government plan for everyone to take the experimental gene-based vaccines. These are not traditional vaccines. They don't realize the vaccine passport is a trap. And there is mounting evidence that these so-called vaccines are indeed bad medicine. Andrew's already mentioned it, but there's been over 4,500 deaths in the United States notified after the vaccinations, and over 11,000 dead in Europe in the immediate aftermath of taking the vaccines. But we don't hear this on the mainstream media. In my, work, in my work as a GP, I've only had two elderly patients die from COVID. Both of them got sick exactly seven days after their first COVID shot in a pattern that was replicated in many nursing homes across Ireland in, this, in January 2021. This week, a patient told me that a 47-year-old work colleague had died from a stroke within a week of getting the vaccine. Another patient told me that his sister is now paralyzed on one side of her body. She too had a stroke shortly after getting the vaccine. Why are my medical colleagues staying silent? I'm appealing to their better nature and the idealism that they surely had when they started their careers. This is potentially the biggest medical scandal in history. We know that these gene-based vaccines cause your cells to make spike proteins, which research confirms cause clotting, bleeding, strokes, heart attacks, if they get into your bloodstream. The fact that it does, that they do so, has now been confirmed experimentally, and they're seen to accumulate in various organs around the body. In plain language, these are toxins. The medical community are tacitly acknowledging this fact. In Japan, vaccinated people are prohibited indefinitely from donating blood. And in the United States, the plasma portion of blood from vaccinated people is considered unusable. 
Our brothers and sisters have been psychologically manipulated by Tony Hoolan and Stephen Donnelly. But more plainly, these scoundrels have used fear as a weapon against the people of Ireland. They forced our brothers and sisters to believe the vaccine will be their golden ticket. They're breaching the principles of the Nuremberg Code by their coercive measures. By accepting the vaccine passport, our brothers and sisters are helping to build the virtual prison of the future technocracy. All the pieces are coming together. The EU only this week announced the rollout of the digital wallet. Soon we're going to have the digital euro. It doesn't take much imagination to see the progression to a Chinese-style social credit scoring system. Varadkar, Martin, Coveney, kiss Schwab's ring at Davos each year. <laughs> Schwab and the World Economic Forum are a front for UN Agenda 2030. And the great, the great reset is the plan these anti-democratic demagogues are pursuing to gain ever increasing control and power over us ordinary people. And just you watch, when COVID runs out of steam, it will be the so-called climate crisis that will be used to drive their agenda. Klaus Schwab's vision in his own book about the Great Reset speaks of, and I quote, having to maintain social distancing, justifying an acceleration to automation and the replacement of humans with robots. Human contact must be minimized due to the lasting fear of infection, end quote. And he calls this building back better. What a lunatic. The, the more religiously minded of you will recognize this as a reworking of Salve et Coagula. This line, building back better, has been parroted by our very own Varadkar. We must resist this plan. We must reject their fear and propaganda. We must redouble our efforts to fight this charity. We do this through love, not fear. Love is stronger than fear. Love of our freedom, love of our children, love of the rights and responsibilities given to us by God. Semper Fi. A big cheer for Dr. Pat Morrissey. Our next speaker, who will also be our final speaker, he told me not to make much of a fuss about him. He said he's just an ordinary citizen. We all know he's an extraordinary citizen and a fantastic man. Everybody put your hands together for dear Muro Koyla. Bahorda Habin and Sahari to know Mars go doing the henshaw. Neil the Rawa of Gang, Akshas of a Hogan, our son of Thiringa. Law and ye glay, Tar Gartishi of Erta for Yonsi. For Yonsi, on our real to Spain, I was on a part of Hegelair, the Dark Lion. I was Darren Shin, Gone in Eshcock, the Bay, and Dolesh. Neil on a D Politool, no Fasula Cartagain. I was Neil Shay, Neil Shay in her fall, a mask in Countess the part of her, Teva Stig, no Teva Mud and Doll. Harsh in fear, as comma eared, anonymous of her, on at a yesh, no net a clay. Taught her in dull, I was Bacartoing all ray glow. Friends, we have had to meet here again today. Because we have no choice.
people to stand up for the truth. Day after day, our fundamental rights are being rolled back. We are living under a system which is properly called rule by decree. It is properly called that because our minister can simply sign an order depriving us of our fundamental and inalienable rights and on signing it has the force of law in our state. And when I say it has the force of law, I mean exactly that. It is force in every sense of the word. And increasingly, we are witness to force being used against upstanding citizens for no good reason. It is curious, it is curious why these arbitrary powers are not deployed against the drug mongers in our community or against the financial predators that are terrorizing families throughout the country. But if somebody wants to go to mass, if somebody wants to meet their neighbor for a pint, or God forbid, the citizens might want to assemble peaceably to discuss matters of public policy. That becomes at the sole discretion of government under these emergency powers, a criminal outrage. Imagine organizing these rallies here in Cork. I'm told that the organizers have to meet in secret because they could be charged and face huge fines. Is this a criminal activity? No. Well, the act they voted on is named, and I quote, criminal justice enforcement powers, close quote. So effectively, they are criminalizing normal human social interaction. And this is at the discretion of government. Looking back two and a half years, it seems clear to me why Drew Harris was appointed as commissioner of Ontario to Because he has direct, he has direct experience in managing a lawless police force and of taking direction from corrupt government. Remember, remember, Drew Harris has infamy for his covering up of the Benin murder gang. Harris is sworn under the British Official Secrets Act. How can he be loyal to our constitution and be under obligation to a foreign state at the same time? Under his watch, we are witnessing increasingly heavy-handed policing. Perhaps that is directly why he was appointed. Joe Harris should be in jail. <laughs> Members of the Garden must not allow themselves to be used against their own people because this is what is happening. I want to ask you to think about civil rights within our state and about the fundamental, about our fundamental human rights and, and universal human rights. How do we reconcile the right of any government to suspend or deny such things under any circumstances at all? How can we reconcile ourselves to, to any government who can do so? even without reference to Dahl Aaron. There is an old saying, if it quacks, it must be a duck. Well, the duck has quacked. We are now living under a system of rule by decree. This is not democracy or anything like it. The matter now before us as before President Michael D. Higgins for signing. Michael D. 
bent his reputation, whether justified or not, he bent his reputation on claiming to defend human rights in Africa and in Central America. We can now defend our rights. Will Michael Lee defend the integrity and the importance of the Universal Declaration on Human Rights? Will he do his specific duty and defend our Constitution by refusing to sign these measures into power? He must! He must! He must! Some say that Michael D has no power other than to delay matters. But I say he has no more authority to allow this violation of our rights than Pinochet had or than Marcos had in Chile or in the Philippines. It is a decision for Michael D. Will he uphold fundamental rights or will he not? He must! He must! He must! He must! We are now subjects of the state rather than citizens who own the state and who have fundamental rights, rights that we reserved for ourselves when we enacted Butter Up the Hearn in 1937. Yeah. In democracy, in democracy, citizens are supposed to decide the policy of their own state. They debate matters and they study issues and they make proposals and they decide. But, for example, when was the last time anybody here was consulted regarding the housing or the homeless crisis in Ireland? Never. Never. Did we, as a people, agree that so many should be without a place to call home? No. No. Did we agree to allow virtual funds to prey on our housing and give them tax exemptions while doing so. Every week, unfortunate people are taken out of the River Lee, or they die on our streets, or they die in homeless shelters, or they die in lonely, quiet places, isolated. Housing and homelessness is a major, major problem here, and it will continue until we change it. Yeah. Imagine something. Our state has clapped up nearly 50 billion euros worth of debts to fight a relatively minor problem that they call the coronavirus. For half of that money, just for half of it, the state could have built 100,000 Quality homes, 100,000 homes. For just half, for just half of the COVID bill, they could have housed every single family on the waiting list in Ireland. And they could have employed thousands of workers in the process. These homes will have generated rental income for the state and increased the overall production capacity. But no, the money goes to Big Pharma and the usual list of vested interests that feed off government contracts. They are greedy, greedy monsters. And of course, the monopoly controlled banking business who created all this money out of nothing on a computer keyboard with no hard day's work done to create the wealth, these banks will earn massive profits as the loans are repaid. And who will pay back this massive, this massive debt? We will. We will. The working women and the working men of Ireland will pay it. That is who. The generations to come will be shackled with even more debts piled up upon the debts they were forced upon us to bail out the private banks and their bondholders 10 years ago. But there is no bailout for the people. Just abuse, dismissal, disrespect, exploitation, and coercion for when we dare to object to it. 
This is about fundamental rights. So now I have another question for you. Do you think that any of you have any real say in deciding the policy of our state? Oh. Another serious question. And this one I want you to think about when you leave and mull over the impact of it. Given that our constitution says that it is the right of the people, and I quote you from Bunrock, to decide all questions of national policy. That's what the constitution says our right is. So how does any citizen, how does any of you step forward to propose a policy to our state? We're supposed to own this state, law and character of our son. You can't propose policy. There is no such mechanism. How do we propose it? With whom, where, how? The answer is you can't. Nowhere in this state can a citizen step forward and propose policy, even though that is what is our right. All you can do is appeal to the private member clubs the political parties. That's all one can do is reduce to, to that. The party system here decides everything. They are lackeys of the powerful vested interests that rule over us. But remember this, less than 1.5%, less than 1.5% of the people in Ireland are members of any political party whatsoever. So they are an elite. And even within that elite, the answer from the top down, there's a handful of people who rule over Ireland. Yes. The more we look at our state, the more we see how utterly undemocratic it is. But these emergency powers, they bring us into deeper disgrace. Shame on those who represent us. Shame on them. The renewal of emergency powers this week was ably assisted by the so-called opposition. Yes, there was a, a divided vote, but for 15 months, less than a handful of TDs made any serious comment at all in defense of our fundamental rights. When normal, everyday human activity was criminalized, they remained silent, or they spoke only in whispers, not to cause any real problem for their master. Fundamentally, our rulers have no respect for us. They do not love Ireland or things Irish. They are the overseers of our enslavement. If there was ever a time to shout out, it's now. Our civil rights and truth worth defending. The main opposition parties, the main opposition party has played a particularly cynical role in renewing these powers. They supported government policy for over a year. In fact, they demanded harsher measures. Over the last week, they went from fully supporting the emergency law then abstaining during the Senate vote, and then finally switching at the last minute to vote against it in the Dáil. However, interesting is the fact that five senior Sinn Féin TDs were absent when the vote was called, including Mary Lou. Their presence could have changed the result. Of course, their absence was probably by agreement with government, with some lame excuse attached to it. In Irish, we have, an, we have a name for their likes. We call them Tyke and Daw Hales. Tyke who sits on both sides of the fence. For them, principles mean nothing. And obvious fundament, obviously, fundamental rights mean nothing either. Shame on them. Finally, I want to appeal to the working men and women of Ireland, to you, the ones who carry the burden of paying all the bills in this country. The appeal is 
We must get organized. Already, tax increases are promised. There will be price increases and cutbacks of services everywhere in order that the banks can get their pound of flesh. We are told that inflation may seamlessly eat away at these debts. But if it does, inflation will eat away at wages and at pensions as well. The world economic order is doing its best to prolong its own existence. To do so is intensifying levels of exploitation and grabbing resources, taking property, everything to preserve value. We must not allow ourselves to be cannon fodder for these leeches in our society. We must reject their anarchy. The harder Mullen Patrol, Deep and Fordy Castle, I was in a raid, like Factus Moore, Condol, I was a Cartafane, a cousin, I was a great person, Slusha. Have a free cross prodigal there, as she now I'm doing, Irene. We must take the practical steps to get organized. There are some peoples around here, at the end, there'll be some singers with clipboards. I ask you come forward, leave a means of contact and your name so, so we can build this movement because ahead of us is utter disaster and we must, we must organize. And as Katie pointed out earlier, we cannot rely upon the official media. They're liars. They take their money. And again, I reiterate more thank you to the, the three independent media, the Corruption Awareness Ireland page, the Irish Inquiry, the People's Paper that's here, other initiatives which are standing up for the people. Friends, we can have a bright future if we decide for that. We can have a bright future if we choose to do so. But we must be committed. Our children and our grandchildren are depending upon us. Going to be the monitor. Well done, Can we all give a big cheer for all of our speakers here today? It's fantastic. But we're going to have a, some music here now. But before we have some music, I just want to say a few words. Um, yeah, so we all heard what the, the speakers, what, what they said today. So we have a choice now. Do we do something about this or do we just go home and do nothing again? Or uh, for anybody watching, do you just turn off the television or turn off your internet and pretend it's not happening, you know? We have to take responsibility for each and every one of us. No point looking at what people aren't doing. The only thing you have control of is your own personal self. What are you going to do about this? Every Monday, we go out and we um, protest down over 25 towns and villages around Ireland. And all those towns and villages would love to see new faces coming aboard. And if there's other towns and villages without uh, the peaceful assemblies, I'm sure you can start one in your local town and village. It's up to you all now to take your own individual responsibility. So in Dungarvan, we have a peaceful assembly at 3.30 on Saturday, next the 12th of June, for anybody who's down there. And I'm sure the guys in Dungarvan are delighted to see you all. It's only one hour drive according to the year. <laughs> so, but all that, thank you all again for coming. We're going to have some music here now. Um, Melody Morales here. Yeah. It's going to come on board with her guitar. I invite you all to stay and listen and enjoy yourself. It's important as well, everybody, that we, we find time to be positive as well and to enjoy ourselves in these hard times, okay?
Control as well here. The people's park of water for every Sunday between two and three o'clock. Yeah. Anybody down there that would like to join, you're all welcome as well. So now we're gonna have Melody here, she's gonna sing a few tunes for us. Just one song, man. That should be enough. Should be enough. So I got a nice track there, so let's see how we can do this. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. She's a gas man. He works on, uh, uh, I saw him on YouTube or something. On YouTube, yes. <laughs> Hello, if you have just joined us here on the Irish Inquiry, we're coming to you live from the Truth and Civil Rights uh, Rally here in Cork City. We're here on Patrick Street and I'm about to, to chat now for a moment to Dr. Andrew Rin, who was one of the speakers at today's Rally for Truth. Andrew, you, you travelled down from Kildare, wasn't you? We came down by train today, yeah. Yes. So we're going and, to stay tonight. Yeah, and I noticed that in the introduction uh, that it was said that back in the 70s that you were fined because you were giving handles. Tell, was, me, tell me a little bit about that. Well, that was Charlie Howe's idea of how to distribute condoms, the Irish solution to the Irish problem, where he put condoms on doctor's prescription. And I am on other, hundreds of other doctors objected to this. Yes. They weren't going to change the law, so I went out and broke the law instead. And I was taken to court in, in Nace, Nace Circuit Court, and I was fined £500 for selling a packet of condoms. And of course, that as a news item went around the world, and it was a huge embarrassment to Hawaii and the Pena Ball Party, and to the country indeed. So very shortly after that, the law was changed. Yes, so very, very interesting. And of course, you were the founder of the hospital in Clane. Yeah, I did that when I was uh, chairman of the Irish Family Planning Association. We wanted to find a place. We want... Sorry, we're live. Uh, okay, what did we want to just, just okay, just somebody on. has come up and said hello to us. We wanted to find a place yes. where we could do tubal ligation because it wasn't available in Ireland. But the only way to do that was to build your own hospital. Right, so you you have always been a man, as it were, who's found yourself on the wrong side of the law. Well, I was I, I'm standing up for human rights, really. Human rights is my is my great passion. Yes. And I think if somebody wants to buy a, a packet of condoms, they should be allowed to do so. That's a human right. If somebody wants to have a, a vasectomy, that's a human right. Or the two fly. These are all human rights. So now, I, I suppose, <coughs> it's 50 years down the yeah, line. Yeah. And once again, you're fighting the good fight well, uh, for human rights. Well, I am. I didn't, I, didn't want this, I didn't want this to happen. I think this is absolutely appalling. All our human rights have been eroded, which our, our forefathers fought for and died for. And they're all being eroded willy-nilly and without any discussion or debate. And I'm absolutely outraged by what's going on. I've been very passionate about it. Yes, and that came across very much so in your speech. Yeah. And you seem very, very troubled about uh, this vaccine. Uh, this vaccine is, is a complete nonsense. <coughs> it doesn't work and it's very dangerous. Of course, we won't know how dangerous it is for another year or two. When the first flu comes back into Ireland, people who've been vaccinated may very well go into a hyper-immune situation. Uh, and we're seeing people die anyway from it. I mean, thousands of people have died shortly after the vaccine. It's absolute poison and it's experimental and the experiment won't be finished until the end of next year. So I think anybody who goes for a vaccine is need to have their head examined. Okay, so well, I know that you have been 
on the you know vindicate in the past yes. when you took an issue on birth control and all of that and abortion yep. and, and yes so i just hope that um i, know you that. I, ju I just hope Thank sorry Thank you very much. um sorry for that disturbance people don't actually realize that we're going live here that, that that's the choice of being uh, live on the street so andrew um you know, personally, I hope that this time you've got it wrong because so many people have been vaccinated now at this stage and shudder the thought of there being any repercussions about these vaccines. So I hope yeah. myself personally yeah. uh, this time that perhaps that you are not right because I, the, the, the... I share that hope with you. I have no... I get no joy out of this. I hope I'm wrong. Yes. 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 Yeah. Let's hope yeah. that you're wrong yeah. on this. But you, you're even your ed educated. Yeah. Yes. Get, yes. Based on opinion. your medical. Yes. Yeah. An yeah. opinion based yeah. on your medical background. Yes. So let's hope. Let's hope. Fingers yes. crossed yeah. that you're wrong on this yeah. one, and that that the vaccine yeah. does work because yeah. the, 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 it will be an appalling yeah. vista. Yeah to think that so many people would end up yeah. being so immunized, you know, so immune compromised yeah. and so on yes. as a result of it. Yes. So I just want to thank you so You're much. Very welcome. And it, it, it has been a pleasure thank you. To, to, to meet you. Thank you and much. perhaps you might just send Pat over to me yeah, now. Yeah, I will. Uh, yeah, <laughs> thank you. Thanks for shaving, is it? Yes. Oh, yes, we'll take this here. So if you um, have just joined us, uh, the Irish Inquiry here at the Rally for Truth and Civil Rights in um, in Cork here in, on Patrick Street. A crowd of a couple of hundred, fantastic atmosphere. And you have just been listening there to Dr. Andrew Rin. And I'm about now to chat to, uh, uh, to Dr. Pat Morrissey. So, Pat, we'll just put this on here. Try to pick up your sound. So, uh, Pat, uh, you gave um, a very passionate uh, talk earlier on, and you're very, very concerned and very worried about what's happening. I am, I am. And, well, who knows how the future is going to play out, but we want to try and, and steer things in the right direction. I just want to warn people about the things that they're not being told about in relation to these uh, experimental gene therapies. Um, they're not traditional vaccines, and uh, uh, they're not uh, they're not stopping people from contracting the virus. They're not stopping people from transmitting the virus. Um, so there's a much bigger agenda at play, and uh, one would think that perhaps it is something to do with the vaccine passport. You know, uh, there was a headline in uh, an English newspaper during the week bemoaning the fact that. Oh my God! There was only that 50 percent of the people in ICU with uh, COVID had not been vaccinated. That would imply that the other 50 percent were vaccinated. So this is a story that we're not being told, you know. And uh, as you heard in my speech, I've uh, indirect experience of people suffering harm from the vaccines. I have direct experience of uh, uh, lesser severe side effects in my own patients, and uh, I've had patients who died in the immediate aftermath of taking the vaccines. So this is not like a flu shot. This is a completely different ball game, you know, and people should do their research uh, and do not believe everything that RTE and the Irish Independence uh, uh, tell them about these vaccines because uh, they're bought and sold, I'm afraid, you know, and it's it's, uh, it's people like yourself um, and Dave Boland, Ryland Media and other sources that are trying to get the real information out there and I really appreciate you doing that, you know. And Pat, I know that it's quite lucrative now for doctors to be involved in the vaccination program. It is, yeah. So 60 euro, 60 euro per patient vaccinated. Um, and uh, in order for me to be able to uh, practice, uh, I need to be able to look after my patients. And I, I, I do not operate in a very paternalistic way. I do not tell people what to do. I give them the information and let them make the decision. Uh, so that's how I operate. Uh, I consider it a victory when they decide to not take the vaccine um, because th there is an alternative. Uh, people have been uh, led into a state of fear and uh, they've been uh, deceived uh, about the true nature of COVID. Uh, there are therapeutics, uh, they work, I use them. Uh, they're, they're ivermectin, hydroxychloroquine, sunshine, vitamin D. 
it, you know, it all it all helps uh, protect you. You know, and fear, fear is very destructive. People need to, you know, take off that cloak of fear and just uh, bask in the in the sun and, uh, you know, try and try and live a free life. You know, that's what we need to do. And I suppose uh, the one sentiment uh, from your speech that really struck home to me is the fact that you're a father, and of course. Uh, my platform is that I'm a mother very concerned about the future that we're creating for our children. I mean, that is the only reason why I do what I do. And then to hear you see that you're yeah. coming at this from the point of view of a father. Yeah, well, it's not just their health. Uh, like, they're going to be coming after the children with these vaccines in, in the autumn. Children are not susceptible to COVID at all. They are not susceptible. They didn't, there is no reason for experimental treatments to be administered to our children. Whatever about people in highly vulnerable groups, out with the elderly, but there's no, no rationale for treating young people with these with these vaccines. And there's been plenty of evidence of them doing harm to younger people. And there's uh, uh, case studies done of uh, myocarditis, heart-related problems in the United States in, in relation to these vaccines being administered to younger people. But it's not just the vaccine and damage that it can cause. It's also what's coming in the coattails of the vaccine passport, the, the, the restrictions of our freedoms, the future technocracy they're building. Uh, I was born free. I'm going to try and die free. And I want freedom for my family and for my children as well. So that's what we're fighting for. And it's, it's worth fighting for. Okay. And I think that is, you know, a very, very good sentiment on, on which to end. And I just want to thank you so much for your courage because it takes unbelievable courage to stand out from the crowd to put your head up above the parapet and you have suffered professionally as a doctor as well for taking the principal stand that you have taken so i just want to thank you so much for that okay thank you all right just to take this from you now and set you set you free so if you have just joined us here on the irish inquiry we have been coming to you live from Patrick Street here in Cork for the rally uh, for truth and civil rights. Um, absolutely fantastic atmosphere here in Cork, uh, fantastic speakers, and uh, I think this is just going to be the um, latest in a long line of um, rallies for truth that we've been having here in Cork. So I'm going to sign off now. Um, unfortunately, Facebook have disabled my uh, ability to go live on my own personal and a cabinet Facebook page. I suppose if um, I, I, you know, I, 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 I'm amazed really that they have allowed me uh, so long on my own page without um, trying to silence me. They said uh, the excuse they have given me is that somebody unauthorized right to access my account so it wasn't because of anything that i put out on my page that's it now we're going to sign off here in court from the rally for truth and civil rights i want to thank you for joining us please share get the word out there and um, yeah this is saturday of the bank holiday weekend the um, weather is fantastic get out there enjoy the sunshine let your body build up lots and lots of vitamin d to protect you for, for the winter and uh, until we meet again on the irish inquiry have a wonderful weekend and manox day